Hey class, I'm Mr. Thornton, and I'm going to help you get that C in your GCSE. This lesson, evolution. Scientists have long studied the range of differences and similarities between different organisms and tried to understand and explain why there are those differences and similarities. And that's where the idea of evolution sprang from. There have been lots of different theories of evolution and lots of different theories of how we got the massive diversity of different organisms on the planet that we have today, but there's only two which you need to worry about. Those are the theories of Darwin and Lamarck. We'll take a look at Darwin's ideas in a minute, but first let's quickly have a look at what Lamarck thought was the process which allowed species to inherit traits. Lamarck thought that changes that happened to an organism in its own lifetime could then be inherited by its offspring. So to give you a slightly silly example, imagine that you broke your arm and it wasn't set properly and it grew back crooked. Lamarck's idea was that your offspring would then inherit that same crooked bone in their arm. Now from our modern perspective, this may sound like not a particularly clever theory, but you've got to remember that people didn't have the wealth of knowledge at the time that we do now. They just didn't understand how these traits were passed on. So it was as good a theory as any. Until that is, Darwin came along with his idea. Darwin's theory of evolution by natural selection works like this. Due to natural mutation from generation to generation, individuals within a species may show a wide range of variation. If we look at one property, for example, such as height, from a group of siblings all born at the same time, you may get a range of different heights. This is variation. Darwin suggested that those individuals with a mutation which was beneficial to them had a better chance of survival than those individuals who had a mutation which wasn't as beneficial to them. The organisms with the useful mutation would therefore be much more likely to survive and be able to reproduce. This useful trait, which they then developed purely by accident, would then be passed on to their offspring. You might only notice very tiny variations from generation to generation, but over dozens and dozens of generations, all these little changes would add up and you'd get a very, very big change. And that species would have become adapted to whatever environment it was living in. Essentially, you can sum it up as nature gives everything a go, pretty much at random. And the stuff that works survives and passes on those useful traits, whereas the stuff which doesn't work, those organisms are unlikely to survive and are unlikely to reproduce. This one very simple, very elegant theory can then explain how we set off from very simple organisms billions of years ago and ended up with the complex and varied life which we get on Earth today. Now, Darwin wasn't the only one working on this kind of theory, but what made his theory so compelling is that he spent a couple of decades collecting evidence. That's really what put his theory head and shoulders above all the others. And it's become widely accepted as scientific fact because the more that we've looked at his theory, the more evidence we've found. Evolution does take generations, so a lot of our evidence is fossil evidence. And we can see the interrelationships between different species in the fossil record. But we can also see it happening with species which reproduce very, very quickly, such as insects and bacteria and viruses. This is why you need to get a new flu shot each year, as the virus continues to evolve from year to year. And it's also why there's now a species of mosquito known as the London Underground Mosquito, which is only found in the warm underground tunnels which are created by humans. This species could not have existed 500 years ago. It has evolved to fill a niche which has been created artificially by our species. It took another half century after Darwin first published his ideas for people to really understand the mechanism by which genetic information was passed on from one offspring to another. But as we've looked more and more at the idea, it stood up to more and more scrutiny. And this is why Darwin's idea of how we got evolution and how we got all the different species on the planet, this is why that's the one which is now accepted as scientific fact. I hope that video was useful to you. You now need to check your learning with the snap quiz. It'll only take a minute. The link is in the description along with all the other links for this video. You can also click just here to watch all the other videos which I've made. You can click just here to download my free app to help you with your revision. Or if you click just here, then you can subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to leave comments and likes. Good luck in your GCSEs and thanks very much for watching.